Hello, Walker County. I'm Larry Brooks. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Smart Growth Walker County. Today, I'm going to be joined by Chickamauga City School Superintendent Melody Day. She's going to be talking to us about the new construction on uh, Chickamauga High School, Gordon Lee High School. It's going to be a great uh, segment. She's going to be giving you a lot of information that you're going to uh, want, especially with the first day of school coming up. So, uh, we look forward to giving you this information. Thank you so much for letting us come into your living room. Hello, Walker County. Thank you for joining us. Today I've got uh, Melody Day, who is Superintendent of Schools uh, for Chickamauga City Schools. And uh, we are going to be talking about the uh, new uh, construction that is actually going to be associated with the uh, high school and this upcoming uh, school year. So, yes. Miss Day, thank you so much for being with thank us. Thank you. It's good to be here. Well, um, let's just get right to it because I know a lot of people have uh, questions uh, and I'm sure that you're going to be able to offer a lot of uh, uh, answers. But, uh, of course, the um, school year is about to begin. Yes. Uh, we've already seen the construction uh, beginning. Talk to us a little bit about uh, sort of the, the first day and what you anticipate with as far as trying to move students uh, from temporary parking uh, to access to the building. Okay, well, we have begun the project and the safety fencing is up completely around the project. They're pouring sidewalks that will be utilized for the next year and a half to two years. We will not have access to our horseshoe driveway, which is where the majority of the high school students park. Mm -hmm. So we are utilizing uh, as near parking as we can come up with that is close to the school. Uh, a large source of that will be at the Dan McNally Field. We'll also be utilizing uh, parking at the Walker County Civic Center for our work-based learning students because they leave early from school and that would clear that parking area earlier. And behind that, there's also gravel parking where our um, students that have pickup trucks will uh, mm -hmm. actually be driving and anyone that goes to Gordon Lee knows that uh, reserving your parking space for the year is a very big deal to the yes. students yes. and so we're we hate this is delayed for them but the, the process will occur it will just begin in mid-October when mm -hmm. this part of phase one is finished but we are leaving the parking on 12th Street from the gym all the way uh, to the stop sign for the senior students. It's first come, first serve, and you must drive a car. Mm -hmm. But if you are in that category, you, you have the opportunity to park as close to the school as possible. Uh, and then we will be doing the reserved parking spaces once phase one is completed. It is a great concern to me and everyone associated with this project for the students to have to park off campus and walk and cross Cove Road mm -hmm. to the schools. We have been in a planning session this, today with the city manager, our police chief, and officers. It has been a great session. We have mapped out a plan that we will utilize as to where the students will walk, where we will have teachers supervising this from Dan McNally to the school. We'll have our detective in town will actually be at the crossing area where the students will cross over to the uh, school parking, from the parking to the school, I'm sorry. And um, we will have to be rerouting a lot of the um, parking and drop-off areas for the other schools as well. Uh, Crescent Road will not change, but those that are accustomed to dropping off children on Cove and letting them walk up the back alley to the other schools, that will be closed to foot traffic. So we're trying to accommodate them with a temporary path that they can also utilize. And it will take a few days to get us into the um, the grind of the new routine. We had hoped to have the horseshoe open day one just to be able to show the students what they would do the next day, but the, the project's already mm -hmm. in full bloom and um, there's no way to utilize it. A at mid-October point, we should be back there with all the students parking on campus, but I, I do want to make the community aware of this. Uh, sometimes cars can really move quickly on Cove Road and there are crosswalks at the library and um, many, many children will be crossing that road every morning for school for about eight weeks and so we want to make them aware to be extremely cautious because all these children's routines will be somewhat different and 
you know, little ones especially sure. darting into uh, in and out of traffic. I'm, I'm very fearful, and we will be supervising thoroughly all around the area, and so will the police. But uh, everyone just needs to be aware. And I'm sure you thought uh, trying to get the uh, the plans and and all of the uh, things associated with the building was going to be the tough part, right? No, this is <laughs> this is probably one of my biggest worries with the entire project. Sure. Once this the phase one is over, it should be much better. Well, tell us uh, about the the, uh, the plans, the building. I know that that uh, of course my children uh, we just had one graduate, but uh, I've still got a son that, that's going up. I mean, we've heard. Uh, different things, uh, you know, associated with the new construction. But give us a little bit of a, a sort of an overview as to uh, okay. what it's going to entail. Well, it is a huge project. I have been told, in addition to all the other parking uh, worries that we have, to be um, ready to accommodate at least 50 cars for construction crews and workers. Sure. Uh, so a lot of extra people will be in the town daily probably for the next year and a half or even two years. Mm -hmm. um, the, the company that was awarded the job on um, August, I mean, sorry, July 28th was RK Reading Construction, and they are out of Bremen, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had a pre-construction meeting. Uh, they're very good at planning, very organized, very efficient, and very much aware of safety. No one is to be in the front area. If anyone's within the safety fencing, they must have on uh, reflective mm -hmm. vesting, hard hats, anyone, even our, our maintenance techs, our custodial crews, if they're within that front area, they must be outfitted in the safety gear. Um, we've been very pleased so far. They have um, one of the hardest things associated with the project is losing the trees in front of the high school, and that occurred yesterday. And I, I have to tell you, the entire town and staff were all in mourning over it. Um, <laughs> I, those that they are, were beautiful trees. They were gorgeous. And yeah. but I have to say, Miss Margaret Baker, those who were Gordon Lee graduates who probably attended in the eighties will mm -hmm. remember her well. She was a longtime biology teacher at Gordon Lee. That was the last time that we actually took the trees down. They've been down several times over the years, but mm -hmm. uh, in the eighties, early eighties, Margaret Baker and her class she had uh, procured the trees from the University of Auburn. Wow. And her, she and a class actually planted those. Wow. So that has been difficult, but um, it, 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 there will be growing pains. Uh, one thing I would like to say is the current high school will be in use. We will not be able to access it from the front, but we will be utilizing the back parking lot. Mm -hmm. Children will go in the back and be able to use the school the entire time. That is actually phase four to um, demo that school. And so we will have it until the new building is completely finished, inspected, and ready for occupancy. Um, the new school will be um, one building. Uh, it will be longer than what we have now because basically we are taking the space that would be in the Tom Lee and the Olive Lee buildings and incorporating that into the main building. It will also be about 10,000 square feet larger than those three buildings are now. So we will be able to have... Uh, so will those annexes, will they stay in no, place? Okay. No, they won't. We, had an, we did think that possibly we could keep the Tom Lee building, but... Um, to do that, it would have to come off of our heat pump system, oh, which will come okay. down, so it wouldn't have heat or air. And we mm -hmm. had in the bid process uh, two different types of air conditioning heating systems that we could install. But when we started looking at the amount of money it would take to do that, and then the state, if we do keep it, will not allow us to house children in the building, so we couldn't use it with students, only for storage or administrators sure. we decided it would be costly to try to do that to keep it and especially since the state would no longer help give m and o funds to keep the building up okay. so it, it is in the process now of uh, the high school is the last school that has any asbestos at all and we have abated that this week and actually the tom lee building will be um raised next week okay. i would say okay. if the weather is with us um, well, let, let's. You touched on uh, a good subject uh, with with what the uh, uh, state actually provides. Yes. And I know that that really uh, has influenced uh, where we're headed with the the new construction. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. I know a lot of people don't maybe don't really understand how that that really drives what we do. But. Yes, it does. Um, 
it is a big concern and a lot of the design and planning of our building is based around some of those requirements. For instance, if you be, to be uh, in compliance in, within building codes, every building should have a male and female restroom on each floor and there should also be an elevator. So rather than go back with three separate buildings, which would require three full elevator systems and uh, quite a number of, uh, of restrooms, mm -hmm. we are going with one facility and only having to have one of those uh, elevators. But now we will have much better restroom facilities. Sure. Yeah. Currently, our Olive Lee building, which used to house the teachers when we were a boarding school and the teachers lived there, it actually does not have a male restroom because it was the female teacher oh, dormitory. Sure. So um, we have a lot of little quirky things about the school. People yeah. wonder why they didn't put a male restroom, but yeah, that's why. That's why yeah. um, but the state will contribute to certain, to certain items, but some things they will not. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, furniture, fixtures, equipment, none of that will be state funded. It mm -hmm. has to all be locally funded. So, so it's the bricks and mortar that, that they're yes, really tied the to? the capital okay. project sure. itself. Uh, they will not contribute in parking areas, you know, the paving for mm -hmm. that, things of that nature. So um, it's very detailed, but it, the way it's set up, nothing deviates from it. So I can say whatever the requirements are, they will be those requirements sure. not only for us but for anyone they do very well are consistent in the way that they carry that out from the state um, the new building uh, one thing that i think is unusual when the school was first built the library in those days but media center now mm -hmm. uh, was on the top center of the main building and once we have it, had a new gym at gordon lee we utilize the old gymnasium as our current media center but it, going back in these plans and no one told the architects this at all but when they drew it it just worked better to be in the center upstairs of that new building oh, wow. so it yeah. is actually going to back to the original spot and um, so it'll be sort of the hub of the main building as well. Well, um, of course, you may uh, have to correct me, but I know that uh, a lot of people have been impressed with uh, really the, the facade of the building looking very similar to yes. what, what is already on the ground. That is, we had quite a number of community meetings and that sentiment was universal. Mm -hmm. that's, that's probably one thing that we all agree on. We would like for it to look as much as possible in the way the architecture the curved windows and arches as the old building mm -hmm. uh, one other thing that came from that uh, one of the community meetings was that there is no portico porch covering going mm -hmm. into the main building and if you are used to going in and out you're accustomed to getting soaked in the rain and um, everyone thought that would be a great addition and so the new one will have one similar to the central office in the Gordon Lee Mansion next door. I have, I've heard people talk about that being a, a great addition. So, yes, yes. Yeah, I think that, that a lot of people are looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Well, I hate to, but we're actually out of time. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it flies by. Uh, but uh, if, if uh, maybe some of our viewers have questions, maybe they've got questions about um, student parking, as you said, maybe yes. some questions, logistical, uh, in the beginning, is there a number maybe they can reach you at? They're welcome to call the central office. It's 706-382-3100. And also, I will tell you, by Monday, we hope to have on our website the complete uh, list of who will park where and how the traffic will flow. And, and as I say, we will have many teachers out and administrators to help monitor that and assist people. I just ask that everyone be patient because it will be a learning curve. It'll take a few days to get into the swing of it, but in eight weeks it should be over. <laughs> well, listen, thank you so much thank for you. being with us. Uh, I hope that uh, everyone is as excited as uh, we are about uh, seeing this new construction. But uh, if you have a question uh, for, for Miss Day, uh, you can give her a call at the number that uh, she relayed just a few moments ago. And Walker County, thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, thank you.